Hi, it's John Pemberton here from Diabetic Muscle and Fitness, and I'm reporting back from the Dexcom G6 pre-launch, which I attended on Saturday. So they invited me along as part of the Diabetic Muscle and Fitness team, so we could get a preview of what the Dexcom G6 can do. So that's a massive testament to the growing community we have here at Diabetic Muscle and Fitness. And they also asked me specifically because I previously reviewed the G5, the Libra, the Minimed 640G online so that people can get an understanding of how they work and what you can get the most out of them. So I'm going to run you through now some of the key features and some of the things that are different between the G6 and the G5, but I'm also going to compare them to the Libra as well so you get a bit of a feel depending on what type of person you are what you can afford, what kind of alarms you might like, and what accuracy you might be interested in, so you can get a feel for whether it might be of benefit for you. So let's take a look at the G6 and what it has to offer. So I've put a general overview here to give you a feel for the difference between the G6, the G5 and the Libra. So first in terms of accuracy, you should see that the G6 is still under 10%. It's not just quite as accurate as the G5, but it's still more accurate than Libra at 11.4%. Now, you may have wondered why they would bring out a sensor which is not just quite as accurate, but when you look at the second thing, which is the number of calibrations you need to do, you can see there is no calibrations required with the G6, whereas you require two a day with the G5, and obviously the Libra, you don't require any calibrations. And the reason for that is they now do a factory calibration for each sensor or each sensor batch at the lab, and then therefore that allows there to be no calibrations required. So I'll discuss that more when I tell you about the 10-day challenge, when we discuss things in a bit more detail. But essentially the big thing is, the G6 has maintained an accuracy of under 10%, but with zero calibrations. So in terms of high proper section, there's still the low alarms for the G5 and the G6, but none for the Libra. And that's because the G5 and the G6 are real-time CGM. They transmit the values to your receiver so they can warn you when you're going low. Whereas a Libra is a flash, you have to actively flash to find out. So you could flash and you're already 2.2, whereas obviously with the G5 and G6, you would get an alert to tell you you're at your defined low level, which for me is about 3.9. And there is something called urgent low soon, which I will discuss in a second. The second thing is, how long do the sensors last? So you can see the G6 now lasts 10 days, which is three more days. And that's more than the G5 at uh, seven days, and but less than the Libra at 14 days. But it maintains the accuracy of under 10% for those 10 days. In terms of connectivity, you can see they're all pretty similar. They've all got an app. They've all got a receiver. They've all got a share function. They've all got a upload feature to their own software and they can upload to Dicend. So they're all very similar. So what about the cost? So I would have thought if you're going to get the same level of accuracy, if you're going to have zero calibrations and there's a new thing called urgent low soon, you would have thought it might be more expensive. But actually for the person who purchases personally, you can see that it's quite a bit cheaper. Over the year, over £600 cheaper, in a month, a good £50 cheaper, and on a daily basis, a good £2 cheaper. Obviously, that's not as cheap as the Libra, which comes out at just over 1300 a year, or 113 a month, or about £4 a day. But what you've got to understand is you need to decide why you're using these devices. If you're just going to use something as a flash to replace finger pricks, and you don't want um, warnings when you go in low, if you don't want all the extra functionality in terms of the differences with the, the arrows. And if you want to sometimes have to confirm with a finger prick when your arrow straight up or straight down, then that's fine. The Libra is probably the best choice for you. But if you want to be a bit more proactive with your management and have the extra features, you can see that you can get that now without as big of a cost as the G5. Now, you might be thinking, well, I use my sensor for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. So I've done the maths. Essentially, if you use the sensor on the G5 for, and it lasts on average three weeks or less, then it's cheaper or just as cheap to use the G6. But if you get maybe four or five weeks per sensor, then you might want to stay with the G5. One thing that is definitely different with the G6 is that now you've got a one button press applicator. So essentially, you just peel off the adhesives off the back, pop it on yourself, press one button and it inserts it, which is a big difference to the G5 because you have to curl these tapes, pull them back, manually insert the needle, which can for the first few times be something that you don't fancy doing. So that is a big difference and I'm looking forward to trying that personally when I get mine in a few days. This is important to understand of the difference between certainly the Libra 
and the Dexcom is if you look at the bottom two rows when either there's a diagonal arrow up or a diagonal da arrow down or a straight arrow on any of the devices you can use those sensor readings for treatment decisions i.e. correction doses, hypos etc. But as soon as the speed of change increases to 1.7 to 2.5 millimoles in 15 minutes or faster than 30 milligrams per deciliter in 15 minutes no longer can you use um, the the Libra readings because their accuracy of 11.4% in general it starts to increase much more than that when the glucose is moving very fast so with the Libra you're not allowed or you're not supposed to use those readings to make treatment decisions because it increases the risk of errors exponentially because the G5 and G6 has an accuracy of under 10% you can use those sensor readings regardless of the arrow speed so again, just taking that into consideration, if you're going to be making insulin decisions based off these readings, the more accurate it is, the more confident you can feel. So it's important to understand that difference. So the urgent low soon is something that's new on the G6. So I've used the G5 now for over a, maybe even a year and a half. So I used to use the um, Medtronic Veo with the low suspend, then I used the 640, but then when the Dexcon came out, because it was more accurate, I changed to the G G5. But even with the G5, I have my low alarm set at about 3.9, 4.0, and that's great because it does help me identify when the hypos happen, but sometimes it will hit 3.9, but I'll have two arrows going down. So I'm already low, it's too late. So what they've introduced is, now an alarm goes off if you are going to hit a level of 3.1 millimoles per litre, or 100 sorry or 55 milligrams per deciliter if you're going to hit there in 20 minutes and you can see if the two arrows are going down the earliest it will go off is sit well 6.9 millimoles per liter or maybe a bit higher than that if two arrows are going down to warn you in 20 minutes time you're going to hit 3.1 so you need to take action then and prevent the hypo whereas if there's just one arrow down it will go off somewhere between 5.4 and 6.9 again so you can take action then rather than getting low in the first place and then similarly with a final diagonal arrow down then between 4.2 and 5.3 millimoles per litre or 75 to 96 milligrams per deciliter it will go off somewhere between there so again the idea of this urgent low soon is it's predicting you're going to get down to that low level of 3.1 so take action then now you might think, well, 3.1 is a bit low, surely I'll already be hypo before I get there. And if you understand that the sensor readings are about 10 minute, 5 to 10 minutes behind the actual blood glucose readings, that 20 minute gap means that it's going off sort of for where you're going to be in 10 minutes time. So it's predicting in 20 you're going to be at 3.1, so actually in 10 you're not going to be there yet, you can take action then. If you had that low alarm higher or where it predicted you was going to get to maybe say 4.1 in 20 minutes then it's going to be start going off when you're 10 millimoles per litre or 180 milligrams per deciliter it's way too soon and you'd be thinking I'm not going to give glucose here because I'm not going to go low so for me this sounds pretty sensible after using a lot of predictive lows before but it will only tell when you get on this 10 day challenge so the 10 day challenge, I'm going to get a G6 very soon and I'm going to do a direct comparison. I'm going to compare the G6 with a G5 with a Libra wearing them all at once. Put them in at the same time, use them at the same time, compare the finger pricks with the accuracy and this is how I'm going to do it. So on day one I'm going to show you the difference between the insertion of all three so you can see is that new applicator effective? Is it better than the old one? Is it as good as the Libra? Day two, I'm going to give you a walk through the alerts and the alarms, how to set them, what they look like. And also on the G6, you can now have two different times of the day. So you can have a setting for overnight and a setting for during the day, which is a lot better for me because I want to have a lower low alarm overnight because there's only basal insulin running. The chances of me dropping are not as much. Whereas during the day, I want a higher low alarm, maybe at something like 4.2, because when you're giving bolus insulin and the drops are quicker, I want to be alerted a little bit earlier. Day three, I'll cover a lot more about accuracy, calibrations, and then we'll go into more detail about the cost. Day four, so the G6 now has some new technology which says that if you take paracetamol, it will not affect the readings. So I'm going to take a thousand milligrams of paracetamol three times in that day and see if it affects the G5 but not the G6, and we'll also see what it does to the Libra. Exercise is a big one. We know that the glucose changes rapidly during strength training and endurance training. So I'm going to do a hardcore gym session on that day and see what happens to the readings and see if the accuracy changes much. 
I'm also into a bit of cold thermogenesis, a bit of activating your lean genes. So I've got a cold bin outside, so we're going to see if I get in that cold bin for 15 minutes, what happens to the transmission, the communication and the accuracy. Day seven, I'm going to get in and do an endurance session. I'm going to get on the rower, get on the bike, get on the ski ergo. So I'm going to see what happens to the accuracy when we start putting some endurance training in there. I play cricket, so day eight, I'm going to take them onto a cricket field with me and see what's the practicalities. Where am I going to put these things? Are they going to be useful if I'm using them during sport? Day nine, I'm going to talk a lot more about calibrations. So there's one thing that I've used the Libra quite a bit before, and when you flash and made, let's say sometimes it's three or four millimoles out, it knocks your confidence sometimes. And if you had the ability to calibrate and bring it back to where your blood glucose was, it would make you feel a lot more confident. Now, I know you can do it with the apps like Glimp, but that requires some quite a bit of setting up. So the one thing I'm looking forward to seeing with the G6 is, if you do have a G6 reading, you do your finger prick, and there is a difference that you're not happy with, say three or four millimoles per litre, you can actually calibrate the G6 so it brings them back together. Now, you don't need to do any finger pricks. It is a zero prick, zero finger prick um, system, but they do recognise that there are going to be some times where it does go out and you're going to want to come back and bring it back together by calibrating. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. And then finally on day 10, which is actually going to be close to my wedding day, I'm going to give you an overview of which was the most accurate during the 10 days. What was the benefits and the downsides of all these features so that hopefully you'll be able to consider for yourself which device will be best for me because the G6 won't be for everyone. The G5 won't be for everyone and the Libra won't be for everyone, but I will hopefully be able to pick out those key points that you'll be able to think, well, taking all this into consideration, the best fit is this one for me. So I don't work for Dexcom. I don't get paid by Dexcom. I don't work for Libra. I don't get paid for Libra. I work for a children's hospital and I also work with Phil Graham at Diabetic Muscle and Fitness to hopefully educate yourself so that you can make the best decision for you. So I'm going to try and do it as unbiased as possible, but I will have a slight bias because I'm a G5 user and I personally think at the moment it's the best CGM out there hands down. But the right, it's not what doesn't suit everybody. If someone just wants a simple finger pick finger prick replacement without having to worry about alarms and all that sort of stuff, maybe the Libra's for you. So we'll take those 10 days to really tease it out. So keep tuned to all the Diabetic Muscle and Fitness channels, our Instagram, YouTube, our private Facebook group, and you'll be able to access this 10 day challenge and see if it gives any information for you. So I look forward to sharing this with you. Speak to you soon.